Hi everyone, Zach here, and welcome to lesson 13 of this series, Learning C++ by Making Games. In this video, we'll finish out the first iteration of our number guesser game by actually creating our favorite number using a random number generator. Of course, to say our favorite number, I mean the computer's favorite number. That said, this series has been brought to you by my Patreon sponsors like Nemian Game and Archaic Methods. All of that said, fire up your project and let's finish out the first iteration of our game. Welcome back to the editor. And in this video, we're gonna finish out the first iteration and keyword is first of our game. So we already have declared our guest number variable. We've declared our favorite number. We have to do our random number. Now I'm saying number weirdly. We have this part done. We have our while loop done and we have what happens after our while loop also handled. So again, all we're doing is our favorite number as a random number. And the way we're gonna do that, let's just close this down, is first we need to include a new header. And the header we need to include so we're gonna use the pound or hashtag key is include the C standard library. And this header, sorry, I was the wrong key. This header gets the rand and srand functions. So we're gonna use both of these, but first we're gonna focus on the rand. And we're gonna get rid of this five. We're gonna set it to zero. You could actually even remove this and have nothing there at all and just declare the variable. We don't need to initialize it. We're gonna just put in an extra line here and we're gonna do favorite number is equal to rand. So that's the function we're calling. So if you've seen the last couple of videos, that's the function that I was talking about in those videos. Then we're gonna use the module, modular operator 10 so what this would return at this point, if I just pause there with the semicolon, so what this does is it divides a number by 10 and gets the remaining value or the remainder. So all numbers then are gonna range in this one from zero, so no remainder, to nine. Now we want to set this to be a random number between one and 10. So to do that, all we're gonna do is add the plus one there. So now it's gonna up whatever this division is or the remainder of this division by one. So our new range is zero plus one, so one, to nine plus one, or, well, 10. So you should think this works, right? Well, this is gonna be a bit of a bug, and let, let's take a look at this. So we're gonna do just a quick check, and we're gonna add an std c out, and then we're gonna c out favorite number. And we're gonna do an end line as usual. This is for testing, delete later. And I'm, I'm gonna actually delete it at the end of the lesson. So if I hit the debugger and when it, find it, and when it finishes compiling, we'll see its favorite number is two. Fair enough, I'm just gonna go three in. You've guessed three, it's not my favorite number. Two, all right, there we go. Let's try that again. Let's do again and it's two again. Starting to see the issue, right? So we need to actually seed a random number. So to do that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna add in one more header and this will be our include C time. And this gets the time function, which we'll use below. So we've already used the random function from the C standard library. We're now going to use the time function and the srand function. And the way we're gonna do that is just above where we declare our variables. We're gonna call the srand function and we're gonna pass in an argument. And the argument we need to pass in is the seed. So this is the seed for the random number generator. What number, how do we wanna start this random number generator? Now, as you've learned in the earlier videos, random numbers aren't really random, they're pseudo random. And what the randomness is based on a lot of times are clocks, the clock on the computer in particular. So we're gonna use time to get the 
current time, which it has its own argument that needs to be passed through. And we're going to just pass through null. We're not going to send in an argument. So what this does is this sets our random seed based on computer time. So if we hit play now, we have a random number there. If we do it again, we have another random number. Four. So you see, we are getting random numbers. There aren't, isn't much variety because it's only one to uh, 10. So that gets us through our first iteration. Congratulations on getting this far and completing your first game. And while this might seem rather basic, think about what you've learned here. You've learned how to declare variables. You've learned a little bit about functions and headers. You've learned how to use different operators, how to use loops, how to use flow control and other aspects that are actually a bit complex. So you've done a fair amount. We're gonna iterate this game to get a bit more coding practice from it. And what I want you to do is I want you to try before our next iteration to see if you can do what we're gonna, what we need to change. So I'm just gonna close this code out for a minute. I'm gonna delete this pseudo code from the earlier lessons because we no longer need it. But we have our first iteration of our, of our guesser here. For our second iteration, so iteration two of the number guesser pseudo code, if I can spell pseudo correctly, pseudo code, and let me just put in my correct symbols there. So what I want you to do is iteration two, make a game that checks if a guest number is correct or not. So expanding from what we already have, what I want you to do is add in a check if the value guest is in range of, let me just put this on a new line, of one to 10. And try coding it out if you want. We're gonna do a third iteration right after that one. We won't have any other sort of training background videos. We're just gonna do the coding videos. So iteration three of the number guesser pseudo, and I just saw I sold pseudo code up there wrong. Pseudo code. I also want you to try to write the pseudo code for this one. So I'm going to cheat a bit. I'm just gonna copy that, paste that into there. So iteration three, we're gonna change this to one to a hundred, comma, and gives hints to the player if they are near or far from the favorite number. And let's say that the value has to be within five, within a range, or er, equal to, so I'm just gonna do this a different way. Near is equal to, or near is equal or less than five. So if they're near, if they're five numbers away, the computer will say, hey, you're near the correct number. If it isn't, they'll go, you're far away from it. It should also still have that check in there. So both of these are going to be our next two videos. And the reason why we're doing it as two different iterations is, well, we're gonna update some stuff within how we code the max range to make it even a bit more, well, friendly to the coder. All right, that said, if you enjoyed this series, if you enjoyed making your first sort of game in C++, go ahead and hit that like button down below. It really does help this channel out. And make sure to hit that subscribe and notify icon so you know when the next tutorial is available. And consider becoming a supporter on Patreon. All of that said, I look forward to seeing you in the next lesson, and I hope that you have a wonderful day.